And we're back again. Welcome to Heroes After Dark. And we've got a lot of books to cover. We're here with our very own, the million dollar man himself, Daddy's Issues. I see you're celebrating today. Magic are in fourth place. It <laughs> Playoff. Hey, three, three and one against the Knicks this year. Next on question. This, Let's on talk this about new <laughs> day that we have not been seeing this table all day. Let's go. No, we no, we've we've got some libations. Yeah. We've got big books. I mean, we just covered one through fifty. So if you haven't had a chance, rewind that and go and check it out. Let's talk about fifty-two. All right. Um. So. This is the uh, first uh, Joe Robertson, and it's going to be the death of a uh, Fred Foswell, who nobody cares about. Uh, Kingpin in it, Bond, bondage cover. Is this a key? Yes. Not no. today. <laughs> <laughs> not a key. I don't. I mean, minor maybe because I mean Robertson is important. But what is a minor key? What does that even mean? Minor key means it's like an ongoing character that's still around. It's like but a five dollar book. He's not. A, he's not a superhero. <laughs> no. He's not. I mean, he's just a good guy. He's like a mentor, but he's not like. Oh my god, Joe Robertson's first appearance. Like nobody's hunting that out. No, I was not hunting Joe Robertson. He's like Robbie Robertson's first appearance. I like Robbie Robertson. Yeah, but are you hunting his first appearance? Oh no, I'm only hunting for him on one twenty one. Exactly. Yeah, that's where it matters. Exactly. So it, it, not not a key but an important person in, in the mythos yeah i would say so minor key is just that was it's the hyperbole one. it's just yeah there's an important character in here but it's not one that you're going to choose yeah fair enough but a great cover it is a great cover but not as good as this one and here we have a nice doc Ock appearance and um this is the first time uh spider-man goes on a date with the uh, love triangle uh, Gwen Stacy. Yes. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's again, not a not a key, but a nice cover. It is a nice cover, or especially it's a nice Doc Ock. Or, yeah. You know, under under a hundred. And I know we talked about it before, but I think that Doc Ock is is the villain, right, of Spider Man, not he is. Green Goblin. So any any under a hundred, I think, issues that have either Green Goblin or Doc Ock on the cover, if you were to like look in your crystal ball, I think those are going to be the ones that people are going to go after when you look into the future. No, I agree. You can find some rough copies where Doc is the, it's hyphenated. It's hyphenated with, with so, assistance of a marking. Of yeah, a with a marker. Pen. And if you find, <laughs> you'll find low grades and they hyphenated or they try to make it look like an extra C. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to All being right. little kids. This one, I mean, it's it's just got good colors. It's cool art. Yeah, give me some golden age vibes. Not a key. But why? Well, I mean, what what's key about this? Doctor Octopus appearance. Okay, I would agree. It's just a Doctor Octopus appearance. Aunt May, it, she was smitten. It's a key. Not a key. Not a key. It's an Aunt May smitten issue. It's, it's just it's not. There's nothing. There is. This is an issue you can still find high grade for very affordable because it's a filler issue. Okay. Other than it's a Doc Ock cover. And therefore, like I said, at some point in the future, those Doc Ock covers will dry up. This one, high grade, always is a, is a, love this cover. And it's, I don't think anyone's ever looked at it, but like when you see like reflections and they have, oh, there's like the image of the villain and the reflection or the image of this one, it's reversed. I don't know when that first started, but this is definitely going to be one of those earlier ones. Oh, it wasn't. It wasn't a uh, three forty. It wasn't. It wasn't McFarlane. It oh was, no, no, this is. Yeah, it was so. this. It was that first, in my opinion. And there's probably a horror, some of the horror movies, probably or yeah. the horror books that yeah, made, the Golden probably Age. had some of those in it, where they had a reflection of something bad in it. That you know, but kind of a cool concept. It wasn't. Well, it wasn't. It's usually, if anything, was the hero with the villain in reflected, yeah. not the opposite, which is this one where you see the villain on the cover and the hero is being reflected in the, in the glasses. Yeah, agreed. Otherwise, not a key. <laughs> not a key. This one, I never really cared for this issue. They did a lot of these where they did like these newspaper or um, they did those sort of things. Now, I would say that Captain Stacy's first appearance is probably more important in this early time frame than Robertson's was. Mm -hmm. Now, nowadays, I would say it's probably reversed, but but 
if you were reading this and I read these as a kid and you read where he dies later on, it's important. Like he was far more important because you didn't know Gwen Stacy was going to die. So you were like, oh, you know, like the father knows. Yeah. Because foreshadowing. Yeah. So unlike... Green Goblin, where the fo- where where Osborn's dad is, you know, knows and he's bad. This is a case where he knows and he and he's and he's for Peter. And it was a little bit. Can different. you repeat that? Yes, he was for Peter. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was interesting. You know, it's a little bit different in the movies. Remember, in the movie he tells him to stay away, mm-hmm. but in here he in here he tells him to protect her. Yeah, not in this issue, but later yeah. on. It's alluded to. Now, this is this is Romita. He didn't even. This one just was a complete miss. I mean, I have issues with this, but it's funny because this one, if as as there's rumors of Kazar and Savage Land, there's like these. There's like an X Men book where he shows up and a Spider Man book sure. where he shows up, and it's gonna be funny because those there's not a lot of Kazar. No, there's not, and there's not a lot of saber tooths on skyscrapers in midtown Manhattan either. Also true. <laughs> so not a key, but this may become a more popular issue, I would say, if Kazar, where you'll see that, that X-Men book where he shows up in this book, because he just doesn't have a ton of appearances. And yeah. there's not a lot of crossovers. So Kazar or Kazar? Because I've... It's Kazar. It's Kazar. It's Kazar. Not to be confused with Kazam by Shaq. Correct. But he doesn't go Kazam, does he? I mean, okay. We're <laughs> uh-huh. following the rules of English. It's bizarre. bizarre. Hyphenated. <laughs> Great cover. Yes, and this is uh, one of the early Spider Slayer. Uh, this is one of the. This is actually again one of those early issues that I had gotten when I was a, a wee tot. This mm. was one of them. So I had really? this issue early, early on. Yeah, this one did not survive. But you picked it out now. At this point, in terms of you collecting, you already were you collecting the this particular portion of the run, or you were only focused on the early issues. So, so it's, it's weird. So I got back into comic collecting because of eBay, because up until that point, I just you couldn't find things, and I outgrown it. I got married, and I just and then all of a sudden I was like, oh, I can go buy these graded books. I know they're going to come in the mail, like intact. And I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start a run. I'm gonna go 8-0 or better, and I'm gonna collect a run. And I, and I met with a friend, and he goes, you're not gonna do 8-0, you're gonna want 9-0. You need to have near mint in the label. Because you are, you're not gonna settle for very fine, you're gonna want near mint. And it happened. <laughs> and at some point I said, okay, I started getting a bunch of 8-5s and 9-0s, and I was like, well, now that I'm there, I might as well go from 8-0 to 9-0 was not a big jump back then. I mean, you're talking, you could bring 100 bucks in the book and go from an 8-0 to a 9-0 most of the time. But and this is when you began the villain arc. <laughs> 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 and you were like, near no mid only. <laughs> yeah, so, so, and then some people are even like, oh, you don't even want the VF in it at all. You need 9-2 or better. Oh, you got even more so new now, as, as time has gone on, <laughs> this is the full villain arc. <laughs> Speaking of nine fours, so yeah, so you'll and I, so as I hit this port part though, it really was affordable to get nine twos and nine fours on a lot of these books. <laughs> um, this is a, okay. So if you're looking at that Mary Jane run, now you got her first cover. Yes, and this is where technically they're all on drugs. With the body contour outfit. Yep. Uh, but you got the first Mary Jane cover. And I think that completes your Mary Jane run. Yeah. As far as if you want all the Mary Jane keys, you got five issues. This is the conclusion of those issues. Is it a key? I think it is actually a bit of a key. I think this one is because it's her first cover and she's an iconic character who now she even has her own. She is a superhero now. Yeah, Jack She has her own run. And I think she's endured the test of time, several movies. And I Jay think Campbell, her Jay Scott first, Campbell covers, she's endured all of those. Yeah, I mean, she's a pinup, <laughs> she's a pinup girl essentially, right? And this is her first cover. So it's a key in that sense. You know, first first cover appearances I do think matter, and this is her first cover appearance. And so it took a long time. Oh yeah. I from, mean, you would go from issue 25 when she's first mentioned until she finally got a cover here on 59, and they were only doing 11 or 12 issues a year. Yeah. So it took many years to get the cover here. You know, if you 
you know, if someone likes you, you're on the cover of the next issue, right? Oh, yeah. Or in the B cover, the second print. Or an incentive variant. Back then, it was two and a half years later, three years later. I and mean, that's it. Fair. Ah, a goodie. Uh, Minor key? Uh, I think this is just such a great cover. It's just so dynamic. Not a key. <laughs> Not a key. But So we don't care about Kingpin's wife. <laughs> No, I mean not in the sense of it being a key. So I think if anything, the only thing that's really notated on the label is that this is actually the ad for Iron Man 1. Good point. So it actually point. has that first Iron Man 1 picture in it yeah. you know, for the ad. And, and, it's a, and it's a, this book is expensive because of the black cover and it's hard to get. So does that make it a key? I think that if there was something in this book it would be a key. Like if you put something in it and then had that on top of it, it would take less of an important thing to make it a key because it's like the Molten Man, right? Yeah. Molten Man is not an A-lister, but the fact that that black cover is so hard to get, it makes it a key. This one is notorious for being difficult. If you had had a you know, first appearance in there, let's say they put Hammerhead in this book instead, right? Or something like that. The spike then, then this would have been a key. <laughs> So now, do you consider this an iconic cover at the very, at minimal? I think it's a well-known cover that's difficult to get in good grade. Agreed. I would say that. As far as being iconic, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think some of these covers, if you ask somebody who doesn't know Spider-Man, you should be like, I think I've seen that before. They're not going to have seen this image. I mean, but they think the, they think Kingpin is... It's, it's not making t-shirts. This is not on t-shirts, right? Some of these are on t-shirts, like non... Perhaps. <laughs> It may be on a t-shirt. Oh, no, some things you'll see it's not a key, but also now it's like you go to Target and it's like one of the ones that they decided to put on the t-shirt. 61. So this was the first 9-6 that I got in the early run. 9-6. Um, yeah. And I got it and I, it was another one of those like late auction clothes. Like this one, I, I got this one before I got the other one. Mm. And it was one of those, like this is where I got the idea. Hey, if you find an auction that's closing like between like 3 a.m. and like 5 a.m., you may steal a book. And I stole this book. And I got this book for like $400 or something Ooh. ridiculous. A 9.6? Nine, 9.6. Six. Nine, six, uh, off, oh, it's a cream off white. But it's a bondage cover. It's the first Gwen Stacy cover. So then the question is, is this also a key? Because it's Gwen Stacy's first cover. And my answer is yes with a but. She's not front and center the way that no. they did Mary Jane. She's side. Right? And I think had they focused more on her, I think it would be a, it would have been a better. I understand why they did what they did. It's very, you know, it's like one of those like, hey, what's gonna happen? Is she gonna survive yeah, covers? Suspense. And they do a good job with that. But if you're looking at like, oh, I wanna see Gwen Stacy on the cover, not a great Gwen Stacy cover. And Won't be on a t-shirt. Won't be on a t-shirt, correct. It's a bondage cover with molten oil about to be poured on them, so probably not. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. Not sold at Target. Not sold at Target. <laughs> 63. All right, so this is the uh, the two vultures, right? This is the uh, Black Key Drago and the uh, Adrian Tombs. And just a dark cover, hard to get. Absolutely nothing else in this book. Not even, a, it's not even a good, I don't think it was a good story, nothing. Yeah. Next. All right. Not a key. Not a key? <laughs> 64. Now, I do like the art on this one. Mm. This book is probably one of the easiest books to get in high grade. That white cover, it holds a press. This book was in was a 9-6 all through eBay in the early days. E easier to get than any of, the, any of these other ones. Really? Yeah. So there's tons on this. Tons of 9-4, 9-6s on this book. And they are they're exp more expensive now than they were, but in reality, it was it was very very common back then. When you did not see a lot of nine six covers, you saw this one. There you go. There's a couple of them in here. We're gonna hit. So now yeah. we're gonna get to the Target T-shirts. This is the one. This this book is a nothing book. It's a it great cover. Bad, but how many T-shirts have you seen where someone got that one from Target or Walmart or whatever? It's a great. They just chose that image. I don't know why. It's him in prison. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's Spidey on lockdown. <laughs> I 
mean, you can't go wrong with that. I, yeah, I mean, they just, they, it's funny because I've seen it on images in magazines, I've seen it in t-shirts. They just, whatever, maybe it just holds color. It's good for their whatever. Yeah. Surprisingly, it's not homage. It, it's not copied nope. very often. I don't think any, I don't think anybody's done a variant of it. So yeah, it's just it's just a well, it's just a like Joy, my wife, sorry, would have been like, oh, I've seen that before. I don't know where, but she would know it. But she would know it. Now this fantastic hey, cover. Hey guys, it's him. That's the Hey guys, it's him cover. Hey Ooh. guys, it's him. Yeah, look at the look at Mysterio's arm. Hey guys, it's him. Oh. <laughs> I don't know who he's pointing to, but uh, I mean, why he's directing. I love the Mysterio ones, though. Yes. And and it's one of those suspension of disbelief, right? Because there's no possible way that you can do the gizmos and gadgets and whatever he does. Because how would you get somebody to like walk exactly where you need to be to pull these off? But you suspend the disbelief, and I think the stories are awesome. Yeah, I mean, he's the king of the dry ice. Sure. And everywhere he goes, <laughs> this guy has... I mean, clouds. and this is another one that Spider-Man, <laughs> like whenever you see like Shocker and Mysterio, Spider-Man is in full joke effect. And and the fact that they get so irritated by it was like, I think it resonates because like, you know, we had teachers and substitute teachers we didn't like and we'd give them a hard time. And like, this reminds me of like- No, it's, you know, it totally is. Like the sarcasm and stuff like that, that would that would irritate them. So. It's great. It's now great I book. have to point out the back of this book, premiere. Oh, how nice it is? Oh yeah, the back. Yeah, we don't have to show too many backs, but it's... Hey, yo. <laughs> this is a white pager. And it is. This is a... I mean, I'm looking at this book now, and I'm like, is... It, I don't know why this isn't a 9-8. I mean, if you look at this, it looks like a 9-8. Triggered. <laughs> Daddy's issues is triggered. Look, no, look at this. It should be a 9-8. The that corners like are... A, that is... That's sharp. Yeah, I mean, look, the back cover, incredible. I mean, chef's kiss. All right. And, and we got to crack out the next box. Got to go at it with another box. Not at it again, but another box. We cover quite a few, lots of iconic covers, lots of home runs, singles, and there were a few, well, you already and know. And we, actually, you know what, I'll bring one out. We, I am filing two books, so I'll bring out a lo my lower end copy of one because we missed a book. All right, if you're ready for that, you'll be ready for the next episode. Oh. Get in the comments, hit that like button, Share this with someone that you know that wants to collect Spider-Man or has no idea what some of these covers are because you're going to get an education and you're going to see the beauty of a multi-million dollar collection.